we'll get going. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Um, as I said uh, before, uh, it's just me this week, so we'll probably be running a little, a slightly more compact uh, webinar just for the sake of my, um, but it's lovely to see so many people turn out. Um, um, you may know, uh, my name is Matt, I um, look after our research team here at Unition, and so that means that my job is to make sure that everything that we put forward in ours um, and in our products broadly are evidence, um, that it's all backed up in a form, and that we can uh, really demonstrate the stuff we're recommending that you do in terms of university work really really does. I'm also sorry about horrible light quality actually that's certainly in your uh, running this. it's uh, one of the best spots in the office. I've been unlucky this, this time around. <laughs> um, so choosing college. Um, the first thing about it is, uh, I think, most importantly, is what the system is. Um, a lot of students who are thinking about going to Oxbridge will be completely unfamiliar with it. It's really cool to have a little bit of an introduction to that before we. Um, Deep, deeply into different colors, which is what we'll be looking at next. Um, and then finally, a little bit there's a strategy college selection um, that you can employ to try to improve your chances. Um, so, what is the college list? There are um, a college of Oxford, around 30 at Cambridge, each one comes with a little crest, as helpfully provided to show this graphic. Um, them functions kind of like a Mini at the university zone. Um, um, the college is bleep. It's where you eat by your student societies. Um, it's for a, a substantive teaching that you uh, receive and take place. And it's probably where the bulk of your studying comes from library facilities or your own college. Um, the college, as I say, is like a tiny university. So, pretty much everything you need. Be within your, um, there'll be other things that are operated at the university level, like this. But if you decide that you want to search on the wall, that's why everyone will be there uh, for you. So it can form a real impact community for you, if that's the kind of thing you like. Students really vary in the extent to which they um, invest themselves in their college community. Some people are invested in more inside of the college, and some people prefer to. And um, a branch much more involved city wide. Um, so the college says, uh, like we thought was being founded when the first college was in place, uh, coming on for 800 this year. Um, and then that growth has been fairly steady after the uh, success. Uh, and the, isn't yet, um, the college uh, opened in 2008, and I believe the new one. Uh, called like Parks College coming up in the next uh, few years. It really is a, an ongoing process of growth with new colleges, um, new groups of students, uh, new academic areas coming into, into being all the time. Um, the other thing I think it's really important to bear in mind thinking about your choice of college um, is that colleges are... <laughs> They're much more like sports teams than they are like something that is kind of formally ranked. Um, you know, no college necessarily better than the other college in terms of what you education you want to get. Um, it is all Oxford and it all counts when it comes to your to your CV. So, you know, it's not so much that you're choosing whether you want to go to you know Manchester United College or Chelsea College where you're going to get the, the absolute best quality of education, whereas you're going to get a poorer quality at say Tottenham University or Wolves College. Um, all of them are equally good. Um, the difference is principally that each person is very loyal to their own. So um, don't worry about which college you find yourself in. Um, everyone likes their own college to a suspicious extent, so I, I wouldn't worry about feeling unhappy with it. Um, that said, there are some differences in terms of academic performance between the colleges. Um, if you look at this extremely busy graph, um, you can see that uh, certain colleges have been very persistently at the top over the years, um, while others are consistently uh, less well performing. Um, now, the thing to remember is this is within the context of uh, we're looking at uh, Cambridge here. All of these, all of the students at all of these colleges are performing fantastically well compared with 
any kind of reasonable national standard. Um, it's simply that within the context of, of Cambridge, even then there is a certain amount of hierarchy um, in terms of academic performance. But as you can see from the messiness of the graph, there is a lot of variation. And so colleges will go from the bottom to the top half uh, fairly routinely. Um, and only a handful ever really stay at the top. I'm thinking particularly of Trinity um, here, represented by the grey line, uh, really sticking around for a long time at the top. Um, so this sort of helps us expand on how the colleges are different from one another. Um, as I've tried to emphasise, a degree from every college is just as valid as any other college. Um, when you come to apply for jobs, it's the Oxford or the Cambridge that the people are going to be interested in, not the Corpus or the Christie. Um, it will, however, have an impact on some important parts of how you do experience at Oxbridge. Um, and we're going to sort of run through those now. Um, first thing to think about is the location. Um, obviously, each college is in a different place. Um, they're all piled on top of each other. That means that some of them, and um, we're looking at Cambridge again here, some of them are centrally located in the city centre, while others, such as Burton or Wolfson, are a bit further out. Um, now, this is distance by the standards of Cambridge, which is to say a 20 minute walk is considered a long way because it's a rather small city. Um, and no more than 20, uh, 20 minutes on a bicycle. So it really is a, a, a very small relative distance that we're talking about here. But if you're really keen to be right in the middle of things, to have a, a five minute walk home from the night or the kebab van, then it may be the more centrally located college like uh, Keys or Kings is better for you. Whereas if you're not far out of that, you might enjoy the, um, the peace and quiet you get in Wilson or Girton being a little bit further away from the city centre. Um, obviously, one of the things you're going to be doing while you're at your college is uh, being a college. Um, most colleges will have uh, room for students throughout their degree, um, and all will definitely have them for your first year. Um, now, these tend to uh, vary substantially. The, um, you may find your home like this, um, a specked piece of um, material that it feels wasted on a 19-year-old, on or you may have the book standard room like this. Um, is very much luck of the draw. Um, different colleges have nicer facilities than others, and you take into account if it's important to you and make it waste. Um, so very keen to have the Hogwarts experience, whereas other people would rather have a non dark room. For, um, as you can imagine, the less handsome rooms tend to be newer, tend to be better insulated, and tend to have a uh, more up to kit. So, if that's important to you, that's uh, an important consideration. Um, so, we're interested in the architecture we've been making. Um, if you really want the whole experience, there are no shortage of spectacular colleges that you can walk around and feel important. To, uh, lucky to be a part of. And there are some in a more modern uh, style that might be slightly less architecturally. Using. Um, the great advantage here, of course, is that there are many, many few core uh, ethics at some colleges. And so if you don't really like being uh, stopped by tourists having to get in and out of your college because of the crowds, um, one of the less handsome colleges might be a bet for you. These all tend to be slightly further away from the city centre. So the, the tranquility really is amplified in uh, places. I think this is Bethel College at Cambridge, uh, but Robinson at um, other colleges that are a little bit more off the beaten path. Um, one of the areas that colleges do really differ, though, is um, what is available in terms of grants and bursaries. The richest colleges, um, I'm thinking of Trinity and King's at Cambridge, of uh, Christchurch at Oxford, um, will have uh, meaningfully more generous sets of bursary grants available for students. Um, if you're worried about money, then this is something that's worth taking into account. Um, if you visit the uh, websites of the colleges you're interested in, there should be pretty good information on there. Um, there is often uh, really generous support available for students once they're there. Um, while I was at Cambridge, I was able to get uh, nearly a full term of my rent um, uh, for free as a bursary. I know people who've been given book grants and given travel grants. Um, there are all sorts of things available, and if you are worried about that, it's worth taking that into account when it comes to your college choice. But it's worth remembering that all of the colleges at Oxford and Cambridge are well off, so it's worth asking because it may be that there are 
untapped sources of money that you don't know about and won't know about until you ask someone once you're there. <sighs> I'm doing this on my own, already a very dry throat. Um, this brings me on to the topic of food and drink. Um, this might seem a little shallow, um, but one of the biggest differences you'll find in your college experience is the quality of the food on offer, um, which varies uh, much more than you might expect between colleges. So it's um, worth taking this into account when making your choice to the extent that you can. Um, wherever you go, you're almost going to be certainly being fed in a spectacular uh, um, antique dining hall. But the quality of the food on offer will vary between colleges. Um, certainly when, when I was at Cambridge, it was, it was well known that the food at Christ's was dreadful, but the food across the road in Manual was excellent. Uh, these are the kinds of things that can be difficult to find on the website. Um, as you might imagine, no college, no college advertises themselves as bad food. Um, so this is where having a little bit of inside knowledge of the kind that um, we like to think we can offer here at Uni Admissions really becomes useful. Um, the last thing to mention here on the subject of colleges is that the subjects and teaching will vary slightly in colleges. Um, more so at Cambridge than in Oxford, there are a handful of courses that are only available at some colleges. I'm thinking in particular of Anglo-Saxon, Norse and Celtic um, and such like. And so if you have your heart set on those, it's worth making sure that you apply to the correct college um, and have a place for you. It's not the um, it's not the biggest factor in the world because it really does only affect a small number of courses, um, but it's something that's worth taking into account. Um, similarly, if you are particularly keen to attend Oxford or because you have one particular professor in mind, um, obviously it's an advantage to be applying to that college if your, your main motivation is to be spending more time with Richard Dawkins or I presume the late Oliver Taplin. He was the one I was keen to see when I was um, applying to Oxford nearly 15 years ago. He was in his 70s then, so I suspect he's, he's not available now, or um, Jacqueline Rose or, or some other some other luminary. Um, if that's a, a really important factor where you're applying, obviously, uh, make sure you take that into account. Um, so the last thing to talk about here is whether there is a strategy uh, for picking a college. This is one of the most common questions we get asked. Um, you know, is there some kind of clever way that I can increase my chances of of getting in by making a smart college choice. Um, and the bad news is that the universities have kind of already thought of this. Um, it was the case that there was one college where you had a 70% chance of getting in and where you had a 30% chance of getting in. Um, this would be causing all kinds of problems for the university. And so they have already thought of a way to sort of combat students who try and outmark them, unfortunately. Um, the way this works is that Oxford will give you an interview at more than one college. So the college you apply to, if you're offered an interview, you'll get an interview there. But they will also, uh, more often than not, send you to uh, another second college for you to have a uh, another interview to see that college likes to look at you. And that way, all of the students get uh, spread around a little more evenly. Um, so that the more popular colleges don't have too many applicants, while less popular colleges have fewer. Cambridge does a similar thing where um, all of the students are uh, scored and rated in their interview and those who are near misses at their first choice of college um, will be put into what's called the winter pool for colleges that have more spaces available to fish uh, additional uh, students out. And this basically means that whichever college you buy to, you, your chance of getting in a very, very similar, um, regardless of where you initially apply. Um, and just to look at that uh, graphically here with the information from Oxford, um, you can see that um, uh, while only around 13% of students are um, who, who make their first choice, Christchurch are accepted, uh, whereas 20, um, um, you'll see that the number of students being imported, so brought in from another college, is much higher. Um, the less popular college, so it becomes very difficult to tell uh, if there is an advantage anywhere. The private halls, for example, Hard um, applies to those directly, but plenty of people get moved there based on their, um, uh, yeah, based on their on their ability. And you can see as well that some colleges, uh, Braysnow, Worcester, 
Keeble Christchurch are getting a um, thousand, maybe even more than a thousand applicants each. Whereas some colleges, all perfectly nice places as well, um, such as Oriel or um, even Pembroke, are getting half as many. Um, and so this is being adjusted for by the, some of the students from the more popular colleges being moved across. So while it can make a small difference, I do encourage you to have a look at this data yourself on the um, Oxford website. Um, it doesn't make a, a hugely meaningful difference um, to your terms of getting in. Much more important to have things like the admissions test um, and so on. The only thing to really take into account here, and this is a, a point I really want to emphasize, um, is that if you, when you fill out your application, you will have the option to not pick a college at all, make what is called an open application. Now, for reasons that are somewhat mysterious, um, student open applications do contain much worse than those who pick a college, even those who, as far as picking a college at random. Um, that means that your choice of college is not a huge impact on whether you need or not. However, you do need to pick one as for whatsoever, whatever reason, not picking one seems to be highly correlated, if not causative, um, of a, a, less, a lower chance of getting in. Um, I would recommend as well, um, this juncture, a book uh, written by uh, me, um, all about the uh, college application process between the different colleges. Um, this was a, a big work operation last year with um, students from uh, very much uh, very nearly every college in Oxford and Cambridge to get the, the inside information on what um, every college was like, what they rec what they liked about it, what they didn't, how the colleges compared, as well as information about, about um, some of the most popular courses. Um, it was a collaboration between myself and dozens of um, students and is a, a really interesting resource in terms of understanding the different, uh, the different colleges and where you might feel most comfortable. And um, having been written by students for students has a uh, slightly more insidery information than you might be able to get from simply looking at the colleges at websites. Um, so I hope that's been helpful in terms of uh, discussing the, the relative merits of colleges and various approaches to take. Now, of course, the choice of college isn't going to be all that important if you're not well prepared for application as a whole. Um, so I want to take just a few minutes to talk about the range of support that uni admissions provides. Uh, before we move on to the Q&A um, after these last few slides. Um, of course, the centre of our work is the one-to-one -one tuition. Um, this pairs a student with a current or recent graduate subject you're applying for, um, which allows to provide a really bespoke focused tuition that focuses on the areas that the student needs to, to improve most, create a, a really effective um, application. And that support goes uh, right through from now right through to the end of the process and can, um, if parents are keen, um, include support for A-level um, preparation as well. Um, and of course, preparation for the interview and admissions tests. Um, to make sure that parents are kept oppressed, um, every, uh, every second is followed up with an in-depth report, which is sent to both parent and student to make sure that everyone knows what's going on. Um, as I'm sure, uh, any parents in the in the audience will be aware that teenagers are not always the most communicative and so like to make sure that parents are kept in the loop. I spoke uh, just a few minutes ago about uh, one of our books. Um, we have a library of nearly 100 textbooks um, we've created in-house through our in-house publishing company. These books contain uh, hundreds of questions for the admissions test. Um, uh, as well as information, as well as um, the further questions available on our uh, prep book, um, which gives you the chance to revise and practice exam conditions, as well as being a hub for a lot of the other services we provide. Um, the prep portal contains not just um, uh, copies of the books, but online courses, um, access to the notes for the uh, enrichment seminars, which we're about to speak about, uh, links to join the um, supportive WhatsApp groups, and other um, other things to help you really get the most out of your program. Um, the enrichment seminars I mentioned, uh, which I believe are happening in uh, 20, 23 hours, um, that are in the same time slot as me, but on a Sunday, are uh, weekly seminars that go into university topics in the kind of depth that is going to really help you prepare for the interview. Um, 
They're hosted by current students and recent graduates, and they work through university level topics, uh, giving you the chance to practice the kinds of um, uh, styles of discussion, styles of uh, question, and styles of thinking that you're going to need in to as well as helping you to understand much more about your, your chosen subject area, which you can bring to bear on your reading and interpersonal statement. Um, they're a really fun, holistic tool and something that I occasionally put my head in on whenever a, a topic that particularly interesting is coming up to find out what, uh, well, to find out new things, basically. Um, and the, the feedback of, uh, we've had around these uh, new program has been really good. Um, coming up uh, more immediately, we have our day courses. Um, these are running over the next uh, few weeks of students on our programs. And these are um, in-depth um, sort of deep dives into the content of various topics, whether that's personal statement, whether it's college choice, whether it's the admissions test or the interview. Um, full day, full weekend courses, uh, giving you the chance to really put your revision into practice in an intent way. Um, and the chance to meet some of the other students who are, who are working alongside you and build a little bit of a sense of camaraderie. Um, I always really enjoy doing these, whether they're face to face or online, as it's so nice to finally put faces to all the names uh, of the students we're working with, which makes it one of my favourite parts of the of the process. Um, we're really proud that the uh, result of all of this work is uh, last year um, our students were able to. I uh, received offers from um, Oxford and Cambridge at three times the national average. With more than half of the students were receiving offers, which we're really delighted about the record we're hoping to, uh, to maintain going into this year, um, even as the uh, whole business becomes more and more competitive. Um, but we don't shy away from a challenge. So. Um, and that record compares uh, really well with um, in the top schools in the country that are sending you know, 100 odd applicants um, and charging substantially more than we do, the Eatons and the Westminsters of this world. Um, we're not as nice from an architecture standpoint, um, but we are, uh, I, I like to think, much, uh, much friendlier um, and less, uh, a little less elite than about some of these institutions. Certainly the outfits are uh, less strange than the, the ones that they, they go for at Eton. Um, sort of coming to the to the end of these before we go into the Q&A, um, if you've enjoyed this webinar, if you have uh, sampled our services and found them to be good, if you've enjoyed our books, and you'd like to send me a nice message, please do uh, take a look at Trustpilot. Um, it'll give you a chance to read the reviews we've had. Uh, to contribute your own and to um, give us feedback on what we can do more of and better as we're always trying to iterate and improve the uh, success of the company. And the final note I wanted to touch on um, was that um, if you have listened to this presentation, if you found it interesting, if you are keen to work with us, but you are worried about cost, um, please do not let that stop you from getting in touch. Um, last year we worked with nearly 100 students on a reduced fee and free basis. Our target is to work with 250 students on that same basis this year, and we still have plenty of students to come and work with us um, on a reduced fee and free basis. Our target is that next year, for every student who comes to us at the full rate, we will be have, we will have a, a subsidised student alongside them, um, and we can't achieve that if students are frightened off from applying. So, if you are in any doubt, please get in touch in any case, as we will almost certainly be able to help. And so that brings us to the uh, Q&A. Um, I should have time for um, half a dozen or so questions before my voice gives out. Um, so um, please drop those into the Q&A section of the uh, software that we're using. Um, and if you have um, any questions that are a little, um, a little more sophisticated, um, a little more personal, um, please um, uh, book a consultation with us so that we can go through your circumstances in a bit of detail. Um, this is um, so that we can give you the best possible answer to your question, as quite often students will come to me with questions that are too complicated for me to uh, answer in the webinar format, and I want to make sure we can get you the right answer, which will sometimes mean that um, we have to take a day or two to find out the answer, a little bit of research, but um, 
please do get in touch if you have any questions um, so that we can find the yeah, find the answers for you and find the best possible approach for your application. Okay. Um, so we've got a few questions. Uh, Michelle has asked about a piano in her room if she doesn't take music at Oxford. Uh, this is a good question on a kind of college by college basis. I know that uh, most colleges provide a piano in the room for students who um, are taking music. So I guess uh, would be the limiting factor would be the piano. Um, so what I would suggest is um, inquiring with college uh, prior to being, but it will also be a number of students perhaps who are studying music or just whether there is one spare. Um, you might also be advised to befriend uh, someone who ha who is studying music, um, but I, I don't know. Certainly that's what we'll take up the colleges and is a good example of the kinds of little nuances that you, you might be interested in. Um, I certainly hope they do have one available for you, Michelle, because that would be very nice. Um, uh, also, we'll ask looking from the side of the uh, the colleges. Uh, own words. Um, often the union or uh, JSR, as it's normally called, the junior college college will have its own website. It's a really good place to look, as this will be content that's produced by students. Um, tell you a lot about the, the college, so I recommend looking at those. Um, some of them will have on unofficial prospectus fill in the information about what student life is actually like and that valuable resource for figuring out college might be a good match for you and um, so that's what i'd recommend looking at the, the jcr website so if you just type in college name jcr it should pop up fairly soon on google um please do drop in any other questions you have so far it's just these three um and while it's very merciful on my voice um I have, more, I have plenty of uh, plenty of time to answer a few more. Um, Gemma asks um, for engineering: What is more important to write about in my personal statement, reading or going into more depth about work experience? So this is an interesting one. I think um, you want to show your 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 best strength. So if you think that work experience you've done is more interesting, um, that better shows your um, your abilities, it's worth having. Uh, a, focusing on that. So if the work experience you did was really interesting, it's going to bring to bear a lot of ideas, um, it's something that you reflected upon, then I would I would definitely put an emphasis on that. Um, and this is where engineering differs a little bit from a, a readier subject like uh, history or, or English, um, where your sort of mathematical ability is going to be more relevant. So I would be putting a a real emphasis on the work experience if you think it's sufficiently interesting to bear it, if the ideas you have about it are interesting. Um, but if the if the work experience wasn't, a, you know, if the work experience wasn't inspiring for you, then you want to be emphasising the things that were the most inspiring, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, Michelle asks about grants and bursaries. Um, so this is one where it's good to look at each of the website, the college websites in turn. But as a general rule, it will be the richest colleges that have the most money to uh, to spend on these. Um, these will tend to be the oldest colleges. Um, so I'm thinking at Oxford, um, the richest college is probably Crocker. You'd then be looking at, um, at Worcester, at Magdalen, um, Oriel. Um, but again, this is one where it's worth having a sort of a poke around on a case by case basis. Um, to see which ones have the the best options for you, but I know I know if Will was here, he's um, frustratingly on holiday today. Um, he would be telling us all about the virtues of Christchurch because they are uh, a very well off college and do have some very uh, some very generous things uh, available there. So that's a, a strong option. Uh, and Rajitha asks about medicine and work experience. Um, so obviously, it has been very difficult to get work experience in medicine over the past two years. Uh, because of the horrible virus. Um, this has been the case for everyone. So if um, if students, if all students have had difficulty getting working, then it does, uh, it does even the playing field a little bit there. What I would say is, um, working with that's marvellous, it's going to be held against you uh, because of the, the situation with the virus. But I, what I would suggest is, really to um, take a broad sense of what work experience could be. Um, work experience in medicine doesn't just need to be working at a hospital or helping out a family doctor. It could be something as simple as, you know, standing in a fluorescent jacket, helping people get their vaccines. It could be working in a care home. It's 
a really broad spectrum of things count um, as medicine. The important thing is the extent to which the work experience makes you reflect on why you want to be a doctor. Um, not necessarily whether it provides you with important practice of being a doctor. Um, aged 17, 18, you're not going to be allowed to practice being a doctor. But what you need to, so what you need to find out is whether you really do want to be one. As as often as often the case, um, much the same with lawyers. You, uh, many parents will be very keen that their children become doctors or lawyers, and it's not unusual that the children will discover sometime later that they do not in fact like being a doctor or being a lawyer. And so I always say that work experience is super valuable for double checking, because the last thing you want to do is to spend years and years training to become a doctor and to discover you don't like it. And the easiest way to find that out is through work experience at the beginning, rather than the experience of actual work at the end. Um, I think I'm going to call it a day there because my voice is, as I'm sure you can hear, a little croaky after speaking more or less nonstop for um, over half an hour. Um, I will hope to see plenty of you next week when I hope I will be joined by someone else because it's in a row without any help. Um, it's going to do the world damage to my vocal cords. Um, but thank you so much for joining me. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. And please do uh, get in from the consultation if you have any questions I haven't been able to answer today. Um, and again, thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you at a few now.